Welcome back to Extreme Lego Life, and today I'm doing a review of these four wonderful Bricktober pack Ninjago figures. I'm so excited to finally have these guys. I remember from the minute I saw them, I knew that I wanted to get them. And just starting at the packaging, looks like a regular Lego Ninjago box, ages six and up. The Samurai, the Golden Ninja, sorry, um... Building toy in a few different languages, and it does say limited edition. Uh, oops. On the other side, it just has a bunch of words that I'm not going to read because that would be insanely boring. But yeah, there's a barcode. I'm gonna scan that Lego Ninjago, Lego Ninjago on the top too. More words on the side. The other side is more words. Now, starting with the actual figures, you can see this box is actually molded specifically for all four of these figures. Starting off with Ultraviolet. I believe that's Ultraviolet. It, I don't think it's Harumi. And spoilers ahead, if you have not seen Ninjago and you want to, then take away from this video, but there is Ultraviolet with the Mask of Vengeance, I think it's Vengeance, it's Vengeance, Anger, and Deception, Deception's orange, I think, and Anger is red, so I think this is Vengeance, you can see on her face she has that white band, a red marking on the side of the band, and lips that are red so yeah and she just has a plain gray face on her alternate face she has an, an angrier expression with her eyebrows slightly tilted and you can see this shoulder pad i believe it first came in nexo nights i could be wrong about that but i think it came in nexo nights first and here let me put this mask back on for a second you can see out the sides are the ponytail pieces which I, they are my first time getting those pieces on the back you can tell that this is actually a helmet that clips into the mask and it's nice how you can lift up and let down the mask the mask has the swirly eyes the yellow eyes and yellow fanged teeth the difference from this one and the set ones that this one actually has an open mouth, which is very interesting. You can see there's a little bit of lighter purple on the purple mask and white giving details. She has basic red swords as accessories, and on the neck brace, she, there are two one by one studs on the back for if you want to put an attachment on there. You can see her legs and torso are very detailed and if I remove the swords from her real quick you can actually see uh, on the sides there is side arm printing and side leg printing which is phenomenal beginning side leg and side arm printing if I take off the armor you can see there's even more detailing, a little purple in the mix of red and some gray. There's more gray on gray, a darker gray. Now on the back, it looks almost like she has a hood. I'm not sure if that is a hood. It looks a lot like a hood because this is Ultraviolet who has a biker jacket on most of the time, so I think that is a hood. And no leg printing but that is not very common to get leg printing so actually I don't know if they've ever done back leg printing but let's move on to the next figure as I reassemble her and that will be Sensei J and Sensei J here let me sorry about this here let's give a look at him he has a simple bow staff piece 
the same one that Sensei Wu always has. And put her back in. Let's pull out J. Trying to these are a little bit difficult. There we go. A little bit difficult to get out, but once they are out, they are out. And yes, now this is J. And here, let's move this into the background so you can see him a little more. Let's put my hand back here. Get a little focus. And you can see as the classic J hair. And this is the future reflection J. And it's pretty neat. I like the little beard and mustache. I don't know if you'd count that as a beard as much as a goatee, but I'll leave that to you guys. The eye patch that he sees, and his torso is very nice and detailed, which has multiple different symbols on it. And if you can see the third one down, which I'm zooming in to now, or the second one up, is actually one of the J symbols. So I th think these might actually all be J symbols that he wears from time to time. On the arms, you can see his other symbol that was for that first appeared in the Lego Ninjago movie, and this is the side arm printing, which is spectacular. Oops, sorry. To get the tiny white little dots on his arm and a nice silver line and a little wrist brace on the bottom another example of side leg printing with the straps going forward meeting onto his belt on his back you can see one of the most classic J symbols which is the face with the lightning coming out of it I think and there are two shurikens, or ninja stars, depending on how you say them, on his little belt there. Again, no back leg printing, but I've never actually seen back leg printing, so I wasn't expecting any. Again, the side arm and side leg printing, which is great. The accessory, I think, it works well for him. I'm glad they didn't just throw in a random piece because that's this is actually what he had in the cave or in the reflection I wonder if someday we'll get a Nia reflection too that would be neat next up is Sons of Garmadon biker dude I don't know his exact name or if he even has an exact name but he does look really cool he was, I think, going to be, he is probably my least favorite of the figures, but he's nowhere near as bad as I thought. Well, I didn't think he was bad, but from the pictures, he was, oh my, this, the bat is off weight. But yeah, you can see on the back there is a painted Sons of Garmadon logo, and he has some hair that's kind of just like the shaved head. He has a tattoo, which I've never actually seen Lego do tattoos before, but Lego made a Lego tattoo on him, which is the Sons of Garmadon logo. And you can see there are chains going around his arm too. There are, I think those are actually bike chains down on the bottom on his leg that goes onto the side of the leg, which is great. It looks like he has some knee wraps or knee pads, some steel-toed shoes. A skull with a wrench on it on his belt buckle. And he has a jacket which is torn on the sides. You can see there. And underneath is a gray shirt with a skull pattern on it. And I keep dropping him. He does have this simple metal bat which I think is a good piece to get. And up to his face there is actually a... Uh, it looks like he painted on his face a skull kind of design, which I think is pretty neat. And his mohawk, of course. And let's put him back in and bring out Kabuki Nia. And the reason, if you're wondering, his hand was upside down, that is because he 
can't fit in without his hand upside down and back. There's Kabuki Nia hiding behind her or her decorational fan. And first off, I just want to really take a moment to admire that printing because I don't know if you remember from the show, but that's the little device that she uses to talk to Dareth with while he's back in the Ninja DVX, Destiny, Destiny's Bounty, ex I don't remember the X part, but yeah, um, she has a nice dragon design with a kind of greenish skirt with a base of red, another dragon down on the bottom, some flowery details, and no side leg printing for her, but I don't mind that because every other figure had side leg printing, so. Yeah, so again on the back, more dragons. Her face ha is purely white with some red markings around her eyes and mouth. And she does have an alternate face, which is similar, but I think this fits Nia more, actually which is this kind of smirk look on her face. I think that really fits in for Nia. Oops, sorry, it's focusing on the figures in the back. And yeah, she just has the classic face. The fan is a really nice accessory. No printing on the back, but there is printing on the front, which I think is phenomenal. All right, let's move on to the fifth and final minifigure, which I've seen other people review this set, and others have missed this figure, I don't know why, but there's actually one hiding in here, on, and here is the last figure, this is Future Reflection Cole, and it's pretty neat, actually, I think they did a really good job with this one, it's very minimalistic, but I think they did a nice job, here's some I look at the side, and here's the back. Now I'll put my hand on it, over it, so you can see the little water. It is really hard to see, but there, that is future reflection coal. So if you remember in the mirror cave, when coal looks into the mirror along with the J, that's what you get right here. This is the fifth minifigure and the final minifigure. And, yeah, so there's all five minifigures, or four actual ones, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Comment below which is your favorite of these figures. Bye.